Hi, imagine this. It's Monday, the last sprint of your project. You just had planning, and you know that you only need to fix two bugs, write some documentation, and you're done. You feel good. You feel excited for the release. You feel excited for finishing the project. You feel, of course, happy to for the prospect of starting a new thing, you feel good. It's Monday, but you feel good. On Tuesday, engineering manager comes into the room, or Zoom, and she says, you know what? It would be good if we run this project through the security just before we release. Does it sound familiar at all? A little bit? OK. So you go to the meeting, and the security team asks you questions, and they have a lot of questions, and they look at the, uh, uh, at the documentation that hasn't been finished yet, and they ask even more and more questions, and by the end of the meeting, you end up with this. And if you ask me, I also have no idea what the snail is doing up there. I've been in this situation over and over and over again. And you know what's funny and scary at the same time? That after each project, we would have this beautiful meeting called a project ret retrospective. Do you know this, this, this meeting? Yeah, OK. And we would all agree that having a security review in the last sprint is a bad idea. And the moment the meeting would end, we would completely forget, uh, forget about it, and the situation would, re would repeat itself over and over and over again. So I am Victoria Dalach. I've been working, uh, I've been in tech for 10 years, mostly doing back end. Uh, and Almost two years ago, I decided to switch my path a bit. And instead of doing software engineering, I joined security team. I joined security team in the same company. So it was a pretty profound experience. Why? Well, because I dealt with the same people, with my colleagues, with my fellow engineers, product managers, but from a different angle. And I realized that security is quite problematic, because we all agree that security is important. Right? It is important. But product people, so product managers, do we have any product managers to, today with us? I cannot see anyone. I, designers, maybe? Oh, there are some designers. So excellent. So, both product managers and designers would think about security solely as an engineering pro problem, whereas engineers would be so focused on you know, creating MVP and scoping uh, and creating the right scope for the, for the project that they would put, um, put security features uh, on, on, on a shelf with a title, with a label, nice to have. So this is a little bit problematic. But to be fair, I, I fully empathize with that, because this is what I have been doing myself. At the same time, security experts don't make security easy for us developers. Like, trust me, the first six months I spent uh, I, I spent uh, in the security team, I would Google at least six uh, acronyms over the course of each meeting. And all of those acronyms, or most of those acronyms, would contain either C or, uh, C or S in them. It was unbearable to, to understand them. And security itself is such a huge topic. So it's like an ocean. I like to think about security as an ocean. Because, well, 
if we ran an experiment and I ask each of you what security is, we would get 200 answers. And if I asked you what, uh, uh, how do you know if your product, your project is secure, you would give me 200 answers as well. Security is an ocean. We have application security, we have infrastructure security, we have uh, IT security, cloud security, and in solely application security, we have vulnerabilities, we have threats, we have attack vectors. It's a lot, and it is overwhelming. But there is hope. And this is uh, the hope I'm bringing you today. Because I believe, I believe that there is a way in this madness. So we all agree that the, the security experts uh, will, will back me up on that. That there is an infinite amount of threats. For every project you work on, we cannot name all of the attack vectors. It's just impossible because there are vulnerabilities everywhere, and uh, internet is a dangerous place, and uh, there are also zero-day vulnerabilities, so vulnerabilities that we don't know about yet. There is an ocean of threats, if you, if you will, but all of them can be assigned to three categories. And this is an acronym I'm pretty sure, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you know, because those categories are confidentiality, integrity, and availability. What we call the CIA triad. And this is important thing to know, because instead of knowing that, instead of dealing with the ocean, with this vast, uh, vast amount of threats, you deal with the buckets. And this is the most artistic picture of three buckets I found in the internet. <laughs> Before I explain why is it so important and why, is it, why this concept is so, uh, so, uh, so thrilling to me, um, let's, uh, let's establish what confidentiality, integrity and availability mean. So confidentiality means basically that we want secrets to be secret. If I send an email to Carmen, I want only Carmen to be able to, to read it. Integrity is we get what we expect. If you go to your Instagram account, you expect to see all of your posts, all of your followers, all the accounts you're following, all the, uh, all the messages, right? If they were gone, you would be upset. You, you wouldn't know what to think about it. Integrity means that we get what we expect. And availability is, means that we can always access the information. In this case, we can, for example, we can uh, access services, and I can send an email, um, or you can get an email every, uh, every hour of a day, right? OK. So how is it helpful? Why am I talking? To, why did I take a flight to come here from Berlin to tell you about it? It is very helpful because it changes the way we approach security. Because suddenly, instead of thinking about vulnerabilities, instead of thinking, oh, like, I guess this is secure, what we're building. Instead of thinking from the position of this ocean and threats and, wow, this is a lot, you can think about these three things, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. But how? How do you do that? You do that by asking the question. And I like the fact that I use the question and the big letter because it it's like, oh, it's, it sounds a little bit more spiritual than it is. Um, but the question is, how can the CIA 
of this project that I'm build building right now be broken? So think about, let's pause. Think about the thing you're working on. Do you have it in your mind? I, I cannot hear it. You can, okay. You can ask the CIA question for this project, for this thing. And this is so incredibly helpful because it doesn't matter if you're a product manager, if you're a designer, if you're an engineer, you can ask this question. No matter if you're using uh, React, JS, if you're on front and back end mobile, <coughs> cloud, it doesn't matter. You can always ask this question. You can always approach security from this perspective. And of course, one question won't be enough, but this is the base. And for each confidentiality, integrity, and availability, you will ask different questions. For example, for confidentiality, who can see this resource? How do we store credentials? Do we log sensitive data? For integrity, you can ask who can create, update, remove this resource. What happens when malicious data is sent to you via form? Uh, is the input sanitized, etc.? Availability. I love talking about availability because, what, like when when we um, when when developers think, uh, hear availability, they always think, oh, availability threat. DDO, uh, DDoS attack, denial, uh, distributed denial of service. This is an infrastructure problem. But the truth is that we as developers, we, we um, introduce potential um, availability risks because what we do, we use different libraries, we, do, we, we use different services, and uh, a few, <coughs> excuse me, um, and a few years ago, oh, that's, that, make me, that makes me sound old, but uh, a few months, a few, a few years ago, we had actually um, an incident where, uh, where the service that we used for um, managing, uh, how they called, oh, feature flags, you know feature flags? Yeah, went down. And for some reason, we didn't, we didn't expect that to happen ever. So our, our product also went down for 12 hours. This is an availability question as well. So think about it when you introduce new libraries, new, new services. This is also why we developers are responsible for availability of our products. OK, so we know what. CAI stands for. Uh, we know how to use it. Why is it useful, right? But when should you do it? And I cannot answer this question without telling you about shifting security left. Shifting security left is the newest, more ex most exciting trend in application security. And if you have in your company uh, people who are security engineers, go to them and ask them. They're, they'll be fr thrilled that you know about it. Shifting security left uh, looks at software development lifecycle. Do we know that? OK, so this is beautiful. This is a, a, co a, a Creative Commons licensed uh, image of, uh, uh, of um, software development lifecycle. Uh, and I love it because it has those beautiful phases, analysis, design, implementation, testing, and evolution. But from my experience, and I don't know if you have the same experience, it's never a circle. You never come back to the thing you built. You always release it and move on to the next thing. Is it true? Yeah. yeah. So here's the more, <coughs> uh, more practical approach to the life cycle. Shifting uh, so when I started my presentation, I told you that we were here 
basically between here when my uh, engineer manager said, oh, let's, let's have a security check, right? Shifting security says, look, this is unacceptable. I mean, this is bad, this is stressful. This is uh, very expensive, like having the security check like between test and release. Because when you have to touch code to change it, it's always uh, more complicated, it's uh, it expensive, it takes more time, and, and it creates stress for you. Uh, stress, you don't, you're not sure if you will, be <coughs> will release on time or not. Therefore, instead of doing this, let's shift security left and tackle security in the design phase. And why is that? Because in the design phase, you don't change any code. If any, uh, if, uh, if, uh, any changes are necessary, then they happen on a piece of paper or some kind of digital piece of paper. They're cheap. They're fast, uh, they're, uh, uh, they're not stressful. It's much easier to create, to create changes and to have security review in the design phase. So this is, uh, so this is when I encourage you to use the, uh, those CIA triad questions. So how do you implement it? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm running. I'm just like running through this presentation. Am I speaking so fast? I just saw the time. I'm like, now I can tell you a joke. <laughs> wow. OK. I will take a sip. Let's imagine that it's on YouTube and you don't have premium. Monsalus, <laughs> a great water. Okay. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> sorry for that. I'm so goofy. Um, to, fit, to 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 basically. Uh, oh, now I'm into water. Now I want to speak. <laughs> About water. <laughs> okay, so how do you implement the CIA triad? You know what it is, uh, you know when to do it, how do you do that? So, first of all, you present it to your peers. Like, if you need help, I can help you with that. Discuss it, like, when you tackle security, discuss it with your team. Honestly, uh, maybe it, it sounded a little bit dry, but this CIA triad uh, uh, exercise can be just a fun team activity, brainstorming about the possible threats. It is uh, cool because it makes you think about not only the positive scenario, and it can, um, uh, it can um, inspire you to find some, uh, some cool security features. Uh, make it a part of your process, so shift security left, and also make it visible. Add it to um, any kind of documentation you have. If you have any templates, and I believe that, that we use templates for, for, for documentation, make it um, uh, add security uh, questions there, add the CIA triad there, so, where, so, so, so people don't have to remember about it. They just, if they want to create some new proposal of a solution or whatever, then they see that the CIA triad is something that we care about, that they also need to think about. So when I implemented it in, uh, at Contentful, um, I, uh, I updated the uh, uh, the templates for solution brief, enhance, enhancement proposals, and requests for comments. But probably you in your company have like a different set of documentation. And basically that's it. And it may seem like a lot of work, but it's only initial, because after that, it will just become uh, it will just become part of your process. And and you know like. It, it will just uh, 
yeah, it will get easier every time you use it again. So <clears throat> to, to end up, like, look, I'll be honest with you, that every week we get new, uh, new uh, news about uh, a new data breach or new vulnerability found. Or two nights ago, I read this Twitter thread about those uh, Twitter, um, yeah, thank you, uh, t uh, t uh, t Twitter found, and it's just scary to think that everyone there had access to production, right? Security, I like, and, uh, security is important, and customers know about it. Customers know that security is important. Therefore, security has become this a big part of sales, uh, sales conversations. And as a sec security engineer, I had a pleasure to fill out a lot of security questionnaires. And customers want to know if you are following uh, secure by design practices, if, uh, if your, if your uh, developers are, uh, are trained in security. So the security, uh, the, the CIA triad is just the best way for you and the easiest way for you to start embrace this security mindset. Because I believe that we as an industry need to understand and need to agree that the careless times of move fast and break things are over because we need to, uh, need to take responsibility uh, for the, the impact we have on the world. CIA Triad is the first step for you to do that. So, good luck. And thank you for having me.